From Words Aptly Spoken, American Documents The Men of the Maine Clinton Scullard Clinton Scullard, 1860 to 1932, was born in New York and returned there as an adult to become a professor of literature. As a poet, Scullard published The Men of the Maine in 1903 in the collection Ballads of Valor and Victory. The poem describes an important but controversial moment at the outset of the Spanish-American War. In 1898, there was an explosion on board an American battleship, the USS Maine, which was stationed in a harbor in Cuba. Although the explosion was initially attributed to a mine, the source was not identified. However, at the time, William Randolph Hearst, the owner of the New York Journal, was competing with Joseph Pulitzer, New York World, for dominance in news production. Both men employed questionable tactics geared more toward sensationalism than accuracy. This style was called yellow journalism, after the yellow kid, a character in the Hogan's Alley comic strip. Another point of competition between the two papers. When the main sank, Hearst's paper blamed the Spanish and raised public outcry for a U.S. response. Later findings called into question this explanation of the explosion, but in the meantime, the U.S. was already moving toward war with Spain. Not in the dire and sanguine front of war, conquered or conquer. Mid the dread battle peal, did they go down? to the still under seas with fair renown, to weave for them the hero martyr's crown. They struck no blow against an embattled foe. With valiant-hearted Saxon hardihood, they stood not as the Essex sailors stood. So sore be stead in that far Chilean bay, yet no less faithful they, these men who, in a passing of the breath, were hurtled upon death. No warning the salt-scented sea wind bore, no presage whispered from the Cuban shore, of the appalling fate that in the tropic nighttime lay in wait, to bear them whence they shall return no more. Some lapsed from dreams of home and love's clear star, into a realm where dreams eternal are, and some into a world of wave and flame, where through they came to living agony that no words can name. Tears for them all. And the low-tuned dirge funereal, their place is now with those who wear green set above the brow. The deathless immortals the heroes torn and scarred, whose blood made red the barren ocean dells, fighting with him the gallant ranger bore, daring to do what none had dared before, to wave the new world banner freedom starred at England's very door. Yea, with such noble ones their names shall stand, as those who heard the dying Lawrence speak, his burning words upon the Chesapeake, and grappled in the hopeless hand-to-hand -hand with those who fell on Erie and Champagne beneath the pouring pitiless battle rain. With such as these are lost men of the main. What though they face no storm of iron hail, that freedom and the right might still prevail, the path of duty it was theirs to tread, to death's dark veil through the ways of travail led. And they are ours, our dead. If it be true that each loss holds a gain, it must be ours through the saddened eyes to see from out this tragic holocaust of pain, the whole land bound in closer amity. Well, thanks for listening. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this book. I love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now.